Turn to your neighbor and ask them this morning, who are you following? Who are you following? I, I, we, we heard the reading from John, the 10th chapter, verses 22 through 30. Well, now, we know the text from the text that the location is Jerusalem. Uh, there is a festival going on. It's winter, and Jesus is in the temple. It's well known that uh, whenever Jesus was in town, he would be hanging out in the temple, and more than likely, a crowd would be around him. And I would say that probably uh, he was in a good place in his ministry. Folks had seen and others had heard about this preacher, this teacher, this healer who had talked in a strange way, sometimes to get to his point across you know do you know you know those parables and, and and he did unusual things and and he had the nerve to declare that he was interconnected with someone else so the text tells us he he was walking through the covered porch named for Solomon and he was circled by the Jewish opposition as if to put him on the spot, to catch him off guard, to intimidate him. Because, I, I say this because they approach Jesus with this question. How long will you test our patience? In other words, you are trying our patience. You, you know, we have that sometimes, you know, some people just get on our nerves and they, they try our patience and they go on and on. You, 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 know, you know how that is sometimes. And, and I, I would think that, you know, they are saying that to Jesus, you know. How can you do that? So we can't stand this any longer. If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. So now we have the overarching theme of this text. What is Jesus' identity? What's his true identity? And, and what does that have to do with the people? Who are you? Don't keep us in suspense. And Jesus' response was, I have told you, but you don't believe because you don't belong to my sheep. They listen to my voice. I would say this was kind of harsh coming from Jesus. But you know, sometimes with folks, you can't beat around the bush. You have to tell them like it is, put the elephant on the table, it may come to a blow like a punch in the gut. It may be harsh, but I guarantee you, you will have their attention. Sometimes you just have to tell folks like it is. Jesus was no stranger in his walk, in his talk. He had never tried to hide anything he delivered in his message. And most of the time, he delivered them in parables because he kind of understood, you know, these folks are not going to get it. So let me give them something. Let me give them a visual or a connection that is relative to the situation or circumstances. And his actions spoke for themselves. So Jesus put the elephant on the table. You don't belong to my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. My sheep follow me. Nothing can snatch them away. In other words, step off. My sheep 
don't circle around me like this. They listen to me. They follow me. My question to you this morning, as I asked you before, who are you following? I know most of us had someone, have had someone to ask us, what church or denomination do we belong to? Or are you a Christian? Can I get a witness this morning? Amen. But there should be something about you, about us, that is working on the inside that others can see on the outside. You know that's something that reflects that we are a child of God. I would hope that someone has said to you at some point in your journey that there is just something about you that's different. Because you see, the sheep know other sheep. Just like the shepherd knows his sheep. Like the sheep knows the shepherd. This is why we boldly say, church, and you, you, you sing the song, you say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Do you mean it? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. Yea, though I walk out here in this world and those trials and trials. Oh, okay. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And I'm about to close. See, I'm, that pass is not long because you get the point. I, I, I ask you, you know, who are you following? And, and because I ask you this, and I ask you, because you know what I'm talking about. When I say, some church folks, some family members, some friends, some co-workers, some acquaintance are not in the flock. Not listening to the voice. Not following the shepherd's voice and his words. Oftentimes they want to hear what they want to hear, do what they want to do. You know, thy will and their will are no way. Let me say it again. Their will and their way are no way. Or we are followers. We, 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 we let them snatch us away. Because we, you know why? Because we are playing at being Christians. We are playing at being Christians. Also, if you don't watch out church, like the oppositions, they will circle around us and try to snatch our mind, snatch our spirit, plant doubt, fear, discouragement, the can'ts, the what ifs. Having the title of Christians does not automatically make, <laughs> let me say it again. Get, having the title of Christian does not automatically make us Christ-like. Yes. Amen. Yes. But also being a Christian does not automatically give us the strength to yield not to the temptations of the snatchers. Okay? And, and so I, I say, you know, we are a work in process. You know, every day we should strive to be a better person, to strengthen our relationship with our shepherd, listen to his voice, live the life, talk the talk and walk the walk, and support others on their journey of getting to know the man named Jesus because you say you know him. You say there is nothing like that name. So you know his identity, who he is and what he did. Uh, we just celebrated Easter Sunday morning. What did he do? What did he do on Easter Sunday morning? What did he do on that Friday evening for us? You know, he hung there on the cross and he hung his head and blood was streaming down. But early Sunday morning, he got up. He got up and all oh, power and all oh, death, where is their sting? Amen. You know, we know. So we come this morning, church, 
together in oneness. As family and friends, we come declaring, we come that declaring as we are on this life's journey together, we're going to take the good, we're going to take the bad, and we're going to take the ugly. But one thing we know, we can stand on the promise of God. We will not be alone. And so we come together in oneness today as family and friends, reconnecting in love and fellowship. Because church, we are, hear me now, we are interconnected by our connection with the shepherd. This is what brings us together holds us together as a church, holds us together as family and friends. We have something in common. We have something in common. We're all following. We're all following the shepherd. We are following that voice. That's who you better be following this morning following that voice because the shepherd knows his sheep and if you hear that voice and you know that voice you will follow the sheep you won't circle around causing trouble and disturbance you got to keep your eyes on the prize amen we are sheep in the shepherd's flock hearing his voice telling us that everything is gonna be all right Hearing his voice when we lose our loved one. Hearing his voice in pain and suffering. Listening to his voice in the midnight hours. Hearing his voice when our hearts are broken. Hearing his voice when the road gets rough and the going gets tough and the mountains are too hard to climb. And so church, I pray this morning that you're listening to the right voice and you're following the right person. Don't let nothing, nothing, nothing and no one snatch you away. In times of weakness, keep your eyes focused on the shepherd. Follow him. And one day as you are listening, you will hear him say, well done, well done done my good and faithful servant. Let the church say amen. amen. Woo. <laughs> amen. <laughs>